أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم وميثاقه الذي واثقكم به إذ قلتم سمعنا وأطعنا واتقوا الله إن الله عليم بذات الصدور يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنان قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم Jazakallah. Thank you very much, uh, Chaitan Mujoka Sahib. I would now uh, like to invite uh, Mr. Rizwan Ahmed. Please come on the stage and uh, give us uh, English and Irish translation of the recited verses from the Holy Quran. Mr. Rizwan Ahmed, please. The verses which have just been recited before you were taken from chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, verses 8 to 10. I will now present the English and Irish translation. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed, in the name of Allah the most gracious, ever merciful. And remember Allah's favor upon you, and the covenant which he made with you when you said, we hear and we obey. And fear Allah, surely Allah knows well what is in the minds. O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness in equity, and let not a people's enmity incite you to act otherwise than with justice. Be always just, that is nearer to righteousness. And fear Allah, surely Allah is aware of what you do. Allah has promised to those who believe and do good deeds that they shall have forgiveness and a great reward. Anish Ostrakanas Gwelga In Anam Allah Anteyata Grasu Trokrach Agashivsha Awil Krajivagwif Shasagiga Train or Son Allah Togagi Finisha Kahram Agus Na Ligach Alk Ain Fabaldi Fiala Immert Togagi Kahram Nafenya Igoni Shinea Ta Nahara Egan Firaintacht Ta Isa Gala Gadain Ker the Vina Shulagwif Tagalun Tokhag Allah, Dun Drama Bean Krajivaku Agus Ayanin, Upper Karhanachta, Gameg Mahunas, Agus Luch, Asehraku Zaku Thank you, uh, Rizwan, for enlightening us with the translation of the recited verses. Now it's time to invite uh, uh, 
our national president of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association of Ireland. I may request Dr. Anwar Malik Sahib to please come to the stage and give a welcome address to the respected guests. Dr. Anwar Malik. <coughs> respected Chairperson Clonelkin Area, representing Mayor of South Dublin County Council, uh, Peter Kavanagh, Inspector Garda Berry Mills, Centre Representative from UK, respected Maulana Naseem Bajwa Sahib, Honourable Guests, my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May peace and blessing of Allah upon you all. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming and welcome you on the 18th Jalsa Salana here in Dublin. The Jalsa Salana, translated as annual convention, is the formal annual gathering of Ahmadiyya Muslim community initiated by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, founder of our community. His picture is here on my right. These conventions are held globally on a national scale and the purpose of these conventions is to increase the religious knowledge of the spirituality of community members. I would also like to briefly introduce to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Our community is fast growing international revival movement within Islam. By the sheer grace of God Almighty, it is the single largest Muslim community in the world with the million of believers who are united under the hand of divinely, the divinely guided caliphate. A single leader whose name is Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed the fixed, fifth successor of the promised Messiah and the present head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community. His picture is here on my left on, and your right. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community was founded by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, peace be upon him, whom Ahmadi Muslims believe as the promised Messiah and divine reformer awaited by all major religions. He claimed that he was commissioned to bring Muslims to the true pristine teaching of Islam, which were taught by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His objective was to spread peace and tolerance that further reconnect mankind with its creator. I will not go in detail uh, to further introduce to you our community and our commitment to integration into the Irish society, as this aspect will be covered in the next presentation. The motto of our community is love for all, hatred for none. Once again, I would like to thank you all, especially the distinguished guests for taking out time for their, from their busy schedules and join us here today. With these few words, I am going to conclude my welcome address with the um, quote of global head of MD Muslim community, um, Mr. Masroor Ahmed Sahib. He was recently asked um, about his views on uh, integration and he uh, said certainly we have no desire to live an isolated existence existence rather we desire to integrate and to be responsible citizens who serve and benefit the local community indeed this is what I believe to be the definition of true integration to be entirely loyal to your country of residence to uphold the laws of the land, to serve your local community, and to use whatever skills and capabilities you have for the betterment of your nation. So with these few words, um, I'll invite Dr. Hamid Khan to give a presentation on the activities of MD Muslim Association. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious and Ever Merciful. Respected guests, brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Peace be upon you all. As Amir Sahib has mentioned, the presentation is about a very brief introduction and activities, a report of activities of Ahmadiyya Muslim Community Worldwide and Ahmadiyya Muslim Community Ireland. So Amir Sahib has already covered the introductory part in his short address. So I'm going to 
uh, go through these slides quickly. So Jamaat was founded in 1889 and now it spans over 212 countries and the membership is exceeding tens of millions and the current headquarter of the Jamaat is in United Kingdom and it was founded by His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad who was the founder of Ahmadiyya Muslim community he claimed to be the same promised Messiah and Mahdi whose metaphorical second coming was prophesized in the Holy Scriptures, in the Holy Quran and in the traditions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. The main objective was to establish relationship between man and his creator and the basic concepts of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, was end of religious wars, reinstitute morality, justice and peace, recognition of noble teachings and great of great religious founders and saints. Next please. One important concept of Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the concept of jihad with the pen. So, in the words of the promised Messiah, Jihad by the sword has no place in Islam in this era. This is the time to do Jihad with the pen. And this is exactly in accordance with the tradition of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and according to the teachings of the Holy Quran, in chapter 5, verse 33, it is mentioned, Whosoever killed a person, it shall be as if he had killed all mankind. So the founder of Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Sahib, he wrote many books in explanation of his teachings and this claim that jihad with pen is the true jihad in this time. And as mentioned before, the system of caliphate is there in Ahmadiyya Muslim community and it is in accordance with the system initiated by His Holiness the Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him. So after the death of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad the first Caliph was Hazrat Maulvi Hakim Nuruddin Sahib and the second one was Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad Sahib all the pictures are there on this slide and the third caliph was Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmad Sahib, then Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad Sahib, and now our current Imam is His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad Sahib. May Allah be his helper. And he is considered as the man of peace, the champion of peace. He travels across the world, he delivers speeches and addresses, and his main idea and ideology is to establish and promote peace in the world, to establish interfaith harmony, interfaith dialogue, pluralism. And in fact, many of his quotes are presented across the world. For example, he says, it is our mission to spread peace, love, compassion and reconciliation at every level of society and in every part of the world. We will not stop until every form of hatred has transformed into love and compassion. So, uh, by the grace of God, Jamaat has founded and acquired over 16,000 mosques wor worldwide. And you can see some beautiful pictures in this slide. And Jamaat has over 500 schools, mainly in third world countries, including Pakistan, India, and in African countries. And similarly, we have over 30 hospitals which Jamaat runs, again in African countries and in third world countries. And they are all not-for-profit charitable. 
and by the sheer grace of Allah Jamaat has the good fortune of translating the Holy Quran over 70 languages and today in our convention we have set up an exhibition and you should go and visit this beautiful exhibition in which you will find these different translations of the Holy Quran Jamaat owns its own 24-7 international channel which broadcasts not only English and in Urdu but other languages as well we have a radio channel in UK and there are different radio channels in other countries as well which broadcast 24 hours a day our official website is www.alislam.org and this website contains a lot of material on Islam on basic uh, interfaith harmony on concepts of uh, uh, basic Islamic teachings and uh, information about other religions is also there and uh, obviously it contains a lot of material related to Jamaat and teachings of Jamaat founder of uh, Jamaat Ahmadiyya and uh, Friday sermons of His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad so now Jamaat has uh, quite a few uh, good quality press and our publications are being done from various press which Jamaat owns then another remarkable thing is our international charitable trust with the name of Humanity First and this organization it is working over 40 countries and over six continents and it is run by volunteers including doctors engineers architects educational and technical staff and of note 93 percent of its donations go straight to the projects and main areas covered are human development disaster relief and some long term projects now coming to Ahmadiyya Muslim Association in Ireland so we are small in number at the moment there would be only few hundred members of Ahmadiyya Muslim community at present but by the grace of Allah uh, we are able to carry out different activities which I will present in uh, next slides so how the Jamaat or community started here so first Irish convert was Miss Catherine Duns Jamaat is registered since 1992 and our missionary in charge is Imam Ibrahim Ahmad Noonan and he will be here with us shortly as I mentioned <coughs> Jamaat carries out different uh, activities including some interfaith symposium and seminars so here is a pictorial report of just a few of our uh, such symposiums for example this picture uh, can we go back please so this is a picture of our Dublin Peace Symposium just last year and then uh, another Peace Symposium held last year in Galway so this is a picture of interfaith meeting in Cork just a couple of years ago and recently a few months ago we had a very successful interfaith conference in Oma now few words about our youth organization which is called Khudamul Ahmadiyya and it comprises of members who are between the age of 15 to 40 they carry out their own activities including educational activities and sports and some charitable work for example this picture shows the flood relief work carried out in 2015 by our youth wing on regular basis we have been organizing blood drives for last few years in which hundreds of Irish people they have donated blood and now charity walk 
has also become a constant feature of uh, Ahmadiyya Muslim community Ireland. We have been holding this charity walk for last few years on a regular basis. And uh, in last few years, it was being held in Dublin. And this year, we are planning to hold it in Galway. So we collect, we collect funds for different local charities. And as uh, I have mentioned before, all the donations, they go to the charities directly. Our ladies, which we call Lajna Imaila, they are also very active. They also hold their own activities, educational, sports and charitable work. And Jamaat members, we go out and visit different parts of the country and we hold campaigns called Ask a Muslim and the basic idea is to remove misconceptions which are there about Islam, about the founder of Islam, His Holiness, uh, Hazrat, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. We have a beautiful mosque in Galway and probably it is uh, the only purpose-built mosque in west side of the country and it is worth visiting. Its name is Maryam Mosque and you can see in this picture on the left side Imam of the mosque who is missionary in charge, Ibrahim Ahmad Noonan. He is an Irish convert. So you can see he is addressing school uh, children. So these school visits are also happening on regular basis for last few years. Then we have different Eid dinners on regular basis. And on the last I want to mention about Ahmadiyya Muslim Peace Prize. So it was launched by His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, may Allah be his helper, 10 years ago in 2009. And it is awarded annually on Ahmadiyya Muslim Association's convention in UK in recognition of an individual or organization's efforts for advancement and achievement of world peace. <coughs> At the end, I want to show a very short clip about the introduction of our head, His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, may Allah be his helper, and about some Jamaat activities going on across the world. So I will request the uh, organizers to play the video here. Persecuted for your beliefs, jailed for your faith, and exiled from your homeland, but you refuse to turn to bitterness or vengeance. Instead, His Holiness has emerged as a leader of wisdom and compassion, a champion of nonviolence among nations. No society can truly succeed unless it guarantees the rights of all of its peoples, including religious minorities. Whether they're Ahmadiyya, Muslims in Pakistan, or Baha'i in Iran, or Coptic Christians in Egypt. I would like very much to confirm my support for the work that His Holiness and the Ahmadi Muslim community are doing, particularly in London. Even I didn't know when I was elected. Then my name even will be proposed. The election is the same as the Pope is elected, but without smoke. I know you are a regular uh, visitor and speaker to parliaments and assemblies around the world, whether it's the U.S. Congress or the, or the European Parliament. Let it be clear that I am not speaking in support or favor of any particular individual country. What I wish to say is that all forms of cruelty, wherever they exist, must be eradicated and stopped, regardless of whether they are perpetrated by the people of Palestine, the people of Israel, or the people of any other country. In this we are allied with His Holiness, a courageous champion of religious freedom and of peace. I'm very glad that the movement, I just 
will do something to correct this image. Islam means peace. I should thank your holiness for your highly enlightened sermon. Not only uh, for the Ahmadis, but I'll say for all mankind. Love for all and hatred for none. And this message not only for Muslim, but for everybody. You are a man, though of humble beginnings, your leadership has made you a figure of global prominence. And you have become a guide for millions of Muslims worldwide. gentlemen that concludes the presentation uh, thank you very much dr. Hamid Khan sahib for a very detailed uh, information about the worldwide uh, activities of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association and especially in Ireland thank you very much uh, now it's a time uh, to have a few speeches from uh, for our distinguished guest. Uh, first on the panel is I would uh, um, uh, re request very humbly to the Councillor Peter Kavanagh to please come on the stage uh, and say a few words uh, to all the attendees of the annual convention. Before I invite him, I want to say a few words about him. Uh, a bit introduction. Uh, Councillor Peter Kavanagh is the chairperson of the Clondalkin electoral area and he's a new councillor on the South Dublin County Council have been elected in May this year. The Green Party's RE language spokesman, Councillor Kavanagh is a former educator, translator, actor, poet, housing activist, and broadcast journalist. He has been active in his community for 20 years, working with the young and old to improve opportunities to participate in the civil society. As a Green Party member, Councillor Kavanagh is conscious of the strengthening shrinking global community and how we all have to work with one another to foster a more inclusive society. His great passion in the Irish language and he has been a strong advocate for the promotion of the language rights and at home and abroad. Prior to his election as a councillor in May, he was a broadcaster with Irish language uh, radio stations. Uh, it's all very good to know that, that he's a multi-dimensional personality and we really uh, uh, thank for him for coming here and to be with us. So I may invite Peter Kavanagh, Councillor, please come uh, on the stage and say a few words, please. What an introduction. Could have written it myself. Akharja, Akharlori, Akhahirlik, Akhuna Ushla, Ukhtaran, Nashunta, Akhigara, Akhuza Vraira, Akhuza Shur. Friends, distinguished guests, national president, inspector, councillors, brothers and sisters. It's a tremendous honour to be here to represent the Mayor of uh, South Dublin County. Um, she unfortunately cannot be here. She is uh, in France, uh, but she sends her warmest wishes and she wishes your, um, your convention every success. Um, I want to begin by saying, Assalamu alaikum. Because it's a beautiful greeting. It's a beautiful greeting. Peace be with you. And, you know, we, we often say that in Irish as well. Shia Khan Daylat, may God's peace be with you. Because when I was asked to prepare a few words about peace, um, that's what struck me, is that we should begin by, by wishing each other peace. And we do this. In, in many communities, we wish each other a visual sign of peace or a verbal sign of peace. And it's, it's important because peace is our greatest achievement. Wherever peace reigns, we can truly say that we have been enlightened, that we are reaching our full potential. For example, in Ireland, and many of you here, there are over 500 members of the uh, Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Ireland, and many of you are from Northern Ireland, particularly Oma, and the greater Belfast area as well. You'll know that the peace on this island was very hard won. And, you know, while we still have an awful lot of struggle, an awful lot of conflict, an awful lot of 
disagreements, for example, we, you know, and I say this as a Green, we can't get the political establishment in the North to work just yet. We're trying to get everyone to work together. The peace that is up there and is enjoyed up there at the moment is truly our greatest achievement. There are threats to peace. There are threats to peace everywhere. And the biggest threat to peace is hatred. So I commend the Ahmadiyya Muslim community around the world, what the Jamaat has done in living its message, love for all, hatred for none, is extending an olive branch, extending a hand of peace throughout the world in over 212 um, countries all around the world. It's just an incredible, an incredible effort to try and spread the word of peace, the words of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, who lived a life that was dedicated to creating peace. This hatred that we face around the world, we see it growing. We see it in, unfortunately, we see it in increasingly mainstream places. We see at the moment in one of the most powerful countries of the world, what is supposed to be the bastion of peace and freedom. We see children in cages along their southern border. And this, this growth of hate, this growth of greed, this growth of violence is the greatest threat to peace. There's an old saying in Irish, in the Irish language, er scáha caila a warren Medina. It has a few translations. It means in one respect we live in each other's shadow. And this is true, for we have to live amongst each other. It also means that we shelter one another. But I think the truest translation of it is that we are each other's reflection. And that when I see my brothers and sisters in the Muslim world reaching out and seeking peace in the way that the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has, then I feel ashamed when people in the Irish community don't return that gesture like for like. Um, as a Green, and I have to get the Green message in, um, one of the other greatest threats to peace is, of course, climate change and throughout the world. And you'll know this because many of you are from, uh, many of you from Pakistan. Are many of you from Pakistan? Quite a few. Of course, we're all from New Zealand today. <laughs> Owen Morgan is the only Irishman who isn't cheering for New Zealand today. Um, You'll understand that with the growth of temperatures in the global south, the challenge that is facing people in places like Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, in Africa, in Southeast Asia. And we know the knock-on effect of this. We know that this is what causes a push on resources. You know, we spoke earlier about, uh, about the, the, the challenge that face governments when, when, when dealing with a scarcity of resources the temptation is always there to turn to violence because greed begets greed and greed begets violence and violence begets war and war is of course exactly what we want to avoid peace is precious war is caused by scarcity and greed and it creates it creates a crisis for the planet in that the the climate crisis is creating hundreds of thousands of refugees that is creating a push on the resources of western countries and that's creating a lot of conflict, a lot of hatred, a lot of violence. And we need to address this holistically and maybe take His Holiness as an example and the work that he does throughout the world, not addressing any one country, not addressing any one people, not addressing any one culture, but speaking to the people of the world about the problems that we face together. And if we face them together, we can overcome them together. Because we in Ireland can do our best to, you know, prepare ourselves for climate change or to work towards the integration of all peoples into our community. But unless as one global brotherhood and sisterhood, we work together as one race, one human race, to address the greatest problem we're facing, climate change, then we will just see more and more of the same problems, more of the same conflicts, and more of the same hate mongers and bigots willing to take the easy option and blame the most disadvantaged and the most vulnerable for all of our problems. People willing to ignore that motto, love for all, hatred for none. Peace is incredibly precious. It's one of our most precious resources. We have, many of them as a green, I would say that the Irish language is our resource, and I commend you highly on the work you've done. 
to uh, translate the Holy Quran into Irish. That verse we heard earlier on in Irish, it was beautiful and fantastic to hear, and I thank you very much for that. And I commend the work you're doing on uh, putting the words of the Promised Messiah into Irish, uh, which we spoke about at the Eid dinner, which was a wonderful, wonderful achievement. But there is nothing more precious over any resource, any language, any people, any wealth than peace. And we have to work together to achieve it. If we want to have a shared vision for the future, a vision where there is no jihad by the sword, jihad by the pen only, a vision where there is no conflict between communities and integration is successful, it's automatic, it's achieved, it's something we have to do hand in hand together. So I commend you on all of the steps you've taken as a community, your contribution to Irish society, it sometimes goes completely unnoticed, but we thank you so much for it. What you do every day, every week, every month, every year in your communities is appreciated. And I hope that as the years go on, peace is just something we all share together in every country, in every place. And that's my vision for the future. And I hope we can achieve it. I hope we can achieve it together. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor uh, Kavanagh, for such uh, beautiful best wishes and commending our uh, uh, activities. I always believe integration is uh, bilateral. You said, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace on you, and we say, Jadakallah, which means uh, thank you very much. So I may invite now uh, the, uh, our next uh, speaker, our next guest, Inspector Barry Mills. Uh, he's representing the uh, Garda Shikana. A brief introduction about him. Uh, Inspector Barry Mills of Garda Community Engagement and Public Safety Bureau, which encompasses Garda National Diversity and Integration Unit, Garda National Crime Prevention Unit, Garda National Community Policing Unit, and Garda National Offender uh, Racism Unit. He is 16 years in uh, and Garda Shikana, providing professional policing services in regular policing, professional standards, fraud, and now community engagement. Originally from County Carlo, degrees in software engineering, policing, masters in human resource management, and various other level nine qualifications. We are very highly honored that he is today be with us. So I may invite him on the stage to please say a few words to us. Inspector Barry Mills. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for your kind invitation here today, especially Imam of the London Mosque, Nassim Bajwa, and to Dr. Anwar Malik, and um, the Commissioner and other high-ranking members can't be here today because it's the National Day of Commemoration, so apologies for that, but um, I'm delighted to be here. I felt nothing but welcomed since I've come in the door. Uh, a beautiful warmth about the place. I really feel that um, from the moment I came in to the moment I'm sitting here, I'm actually quite calm. I thought I'd be a lot more nervous, but you're very welcoming. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at your 18th Jalsa Salana. And um, the invitation itself is very important because it shows your community's inclusiveness, your community's efforts at outreach, your community's efforts at including everybody, including the police force. And I am aware that many of you will have come from countries where you're persecuted for your faith. And in Ireland, let me assure you that we in Angara Shikana are here to support you and to be a conduit through which you can address any forms of discrimination, any forms of persecution that you are subjected to. Angara Shikana, um, to further Councillor Kavanagh's um, talk on the Irish language, Angar Shikana, Guardians of Peace. That is the message. That is what we're about. We're a community based and we are here to serve the community. The policing aspect is, um, I suppose, just the nature of our role. Um, so, in reassuring you of our continued support for minority communities such as the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association, um, I'd like to clearly send out the message discrimination in any form is unacceptable. And if you feel in your community that you are being discriminated against, please, please, please report it to Angara Shikana. If you feel like you're not being listened to, 
if the community or the local station isn't responding in a way that you feel addresses your concerns, please feel free to contact my office, that's the national office, Diversity. You can reach us at diversity at garda.ie. And um, there are a list of ethnic liaison officers throughout the country. These are Garda members who are specially trained in dealing with people from diverse communities and how to deal with cultural sensitivity in any concerns that you may be raising. So you can find your local ELO, as they're known, on the Garda website. If you go to the Garda website, www.garda.ie, and put in the search box ELO, you should find that list. So if anyone is suffering from any form of persecution or any form of crime, please rest assured we are here to help you. And we are um, delighted that you gave us this opportunity. And trust me, my meeting today, I will be sending that message out on our internal Garda intranet called the portal, just to make sure that members are aware, Garda members, of the community and your invite and of this opportunity that you've given us to address you. Um, just to give you an update on Garshikana and in terms of uh, aspects that might be of interest to your community, you may be aware that Commissioner Harris earlier this year has stated that the uniform that we have will be changing to accommodate members of other communities such as uh, the Sikh community who can wear turbans such as those of the Muslim faith so that uh, ladies from Islam can wear the hijab. So if any of you, I see a few young people around here ever want to join a Garshikana, you're very welcome. I would encourage you to join. It's a great way of actually including yourself in Irish society and in showing the rest of your community that this organization is inclusive and we want you to join our community. So now there's no bar, now that the hijab can form part of our uniform. If you are a victim of crime, as I said, you can contact uh, the local guard station. If you have any difficulties, get in touch with me. And um, before coming today, I did a bit of research on the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. I wasn't very familiar with your community, I have to be honest. Love Seuss, hand up. And um, I was actually really heartened by the parallels between how you approach life and how Angar Shikana approaches our work. When I signed up for Angar Shikana, I had to hold the constitution, Bunrok Naheran, in my hand, and I had to swear allegiance to the country and I had to discharge my duty without fear, favour, malice or ill will. Very similar theme to your community and the message that your community is clearly uh, sending out. Your message of peace, love, justice and how life is sacred perfectly merges with how Angar Shikana wants to reach out to our community. The separation of mosque and politics, I see that in your community the separation in Agar Shikana from our role and from politics. There's, a, again, a good connection there. And um, I love the message that I see there on back wall, love for all, hatred for none. Um, and again, I, I do thank you for your invitation here. I know we have been invited in 2016. Your community came to the Officers Club and met with our then commissioner, Noreen O'Sullivan. I know that last year, there was a Sergeant David McInerney and a Garda Darren Coventry Howlett attended your 17th Jalsa Salana. And just to let you know if any of you know those, both of those have been promoted, probably due to their interaction with your community, so it didn't do them any harm. And um, again, just to thank you for your invitation. Uh, to reiterate, contact the Garda if you have any issues or if you have any problems. We are here to help. And um, this outreach that your community engages in is immeasurable in our job. So thank you so much. We don't always get this type of contact from other minority groups. So shukran and assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Inspector Mills, for your assurances and best wishes. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, um, our uh, Imam Molana Imam Naseem Ad Badwa Sahib. He is representing uh, His Holiness Hazrat Mirza uh, Masroor Ahmad Khalifa Al Masih, the worldwide Ahmadiyya, the worldwide leader of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. So Molana Imam Naseem Ahmad Badwa has travelled from London to uh, attend this event. Uh, a brief introduction about him: uh, He graduated uh, from the University of Punjab in 1968. Before he dedicated his life for the ser service of Islam Ahmadiyya. He passed out his, in, uh, his degree 
from the Institution of Language and Theology, known as Jamia Ahmadiyya in Pakistan in 1974. He has been in a dedication of the service of Islam in UK uh, since 1975. He has also been honored to uh, spend time in Tanzania in 19, for, for two years from 1990 to 1992. Currently, he is serving as an Imam of the Battle for Two Mosque, which is one of the largest mosques in the Western Europe. And more importantly, today he is with us, and I may invite him and request him to please come on the stage and say a few words to the attendees of the Jalsa Salana. Imam Naseem Ahmed Bagha Sahib. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'du fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Kuntum khaira ummatin nukhrajat lin nas Respected guests and uh, dear members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat in Ireland Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you. <clears throat> First of all, we thank Allah the Almighty, our Creator, who has provided us this opportunity to get together here for the promotion of love of God and love of our fellow human beings. At the same time, I would like to convey the salutation and salam from the head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community who has very kindly sent me to represent him in this gathering. So please accept his salam and may Allah keep you always safe and happy and successful in your life. As far as this uh, occasion is concerned, this is called Jalsa Salana. And Jalsa means gathering and Salana means annual. For an Ahmadi Muslim, it's a great sign of the existence of God and of the truthfulness of Islam and truthfulness of the founder of the Ahmadi Muslim community. And the reason for that is that uh, the founder of the Amdi community under the command of Allah Almighty, he laid the foundation of this gathering, Jalsa Salana, in 1891 in India. And uh, in the first gathering, there were only 75 people present. <coughs> But he said, and he announced it, and it is uh, published in the advertisement and pronouncement. He said that God Almighty has told me that a time will come that many nations of the world will join this gathering and they will participate in this Jalsa Salana. And in fact, he also received another revelation from God in which he said, that God has told me, I will cause thy message to reach the corners of the world. Now when he said it, even if he had the wealth of the whole world, he could not have uh, act upon it, because there was no such system in the world, there was no any medium that he could convey his message to the whole world at a time. 
So we believe that in fact all this technology which is, has come after that, that was to fulfill the revelation of that promised Messiah peace be upon him. First time television transmission started in 1928 in New York. In 1928. It means and he, he, he laid this foundation of this Jalsa in 1891. And before that he is saying that God Almighty has told me that a day will come that all the nations of the world will join this uh, Jalsa Salam. Now what has happened that later on in 1992 in London the then head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community decided that we should have our uh, own television channel. And it was very difficult for a, a small community to run a, 20, uh, a TV channel. <clears throat> and in fact that was the first Muslim channel which was started in the UK. And then in 94 it became global. First it was only for certain areas of Europe and then it became global. And then uh, in 96, it became, uh, you know, 24 hours. Before that, it, it was for a few hours. Now, there is not a single part of the world where simultaneously this message of the Prominent Messiah is, beyond him, is not being received. Not a single part of the world. So this is why I said that for us, this is a sign of God Almighty. This is the proof of the existence of God, God Almighty that if there is no God, who told Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiyani, the founder of the Amdi community, that this is what, what will happen? When there was no TV uh, system at all in the world, th at least 35 years before that he, he, is, he is announcing that. So whatever he was told by God that is proved word by word. So this is why you can say there is God, number one. Number two, that from the Messiah is also true. Otherwise, why the, the, these words are fulfilled through his community? <coughs> now, the other thing is <coughs> that when now any Jalsa Salana takes place uh, at the center particularly, where the head of the community is present, that is televised live. Only few days ago, we had uh, the Jalsa Salana in Germany, which was attended by 40,000 people. And that's the largest Muslim gathering in Germany. And inshallah, Allah, next week, we are going to have, uh, <coughs> after three weeks, in fact, first weekend of uh, uh, August, we are going to have our uh, Jalsa Salana in UK, which will be again attended by almost the same number of people. And because the head of the community uh, is present there, so that is also televised tele live. So at a time, the whole world is participating in that. Even those people who are <coughs> living in the remote area and there is uh, night time, they also get up and they want to participate in that jalsa. So this is how the words of the Prominent Messiah are the revelation which was received by the Prominent Messiah that is being fulfilled. So this community, in fact, is a divine community. This community has firm faith in God Almighty. And we also believe that we cannot have true love with human beings without having love with God Almighty. You know, the moment we believe that there is one creator of all of us, we feel a relationship between ourselves. And on top of that, the Holy Prophet of Islam said that all human beings are from Adam. These are the words of the Prophet Muhammad. And he said that all of you are brothers and sisters. Now the purpose of this Ahmadiyya community is this, that we want to unite all the human beings. And for this purpose all the efforts are being made. You have just heard few activities of the community and you must have uh, realized that every action which this community is doing is towards that end, that let us get together. 
as generally people say integration, integration, but this is the true integration which the uh, Ahmadi community is trying to do. That we should all get together for the promotion of good values of life. And everybody knows what are good, good, good values are there. And those good values are common heritage of all religion. There is no religion, or any, in fact, even if a person doesn't have any religion, he will not say that we don't need peace. This is why, in fact, peace or Islam, Islam means peace. So, in fact, Islam is the, uh, you can say, accepted belief of every human being. And we are trying for the same purpose. We have no other motive. <coughs> this is why you have just seen, it is everywhere we hold our jalsas or any other gathering, we say, write it, love for all, hate it for none. And for the same reason, in fact, every Ahmadi is told that wherever you live, you must be loyal to that country. And that is, in fact, in accordance with the a saying of the Holy Prophet of Islam, where he said that Hubbul Watane Min Al Imane. These are Arabic words of the saying of the Prophet Muhammad, in which means that the love of the country is part of your faith. That if you don't love your country, you have no faith. You are a faithless person. This is what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said 1400 years ago. Although I know there are some so-called Muslim, or those who call themselves Muslim, but they are not doing th such things which uh, in fact indicate that they are really loyal to their country. Because loyalty to country demands that you must be obedient to the law of the land. You should never do anything which harms the interest of the country or interest of the people where you are living. And you should try your best to s serve the people where you are living. I am very pleased to tell you that by the grace of Allah here, um, I have been coming from very many years. In fact, first time I came here in 1982, uh, when I was sent to, with another person to prepare a feasibility report that how can we establish our mission here for our community. Anyhow, later on you see I have been coming several times and there was a time that all the uh, members of the community, they were all doctors serving this community here in our land, in different places. Even now, there are about 22 doctors who are Amri Muslims and they are uh, serving the people here. And now recently, some people have come to seek uh, political asylum because of the persecution of uh, Ahmadis in Pakistan and with a very terrible situation. Now, those people who know it, you can't imagine that there can be a country in this age where if you say that this is my belief, you will be imprisoned for three years. In Pakistan, from 1984, this is the law, that if any member of the Ahmadi community openly says that I am Ahmadi and at the same time I am Muslim, which is we are, <laughs> there is no uh, sort of deception in that. This is what we are, that we are Muslims belonging to the Ahmadiyya community. This is, what, this is the name which was given to us by the founder of the Ahmadiyya community. And in Pakistan from 1984, the uh, law uh, uh, was promulgated saying that if any member will dare to say this in public, he will be immediately imprisoned for three years, no bail will be accepted. That's another law. And plus, according to, to his uh, financial condition, he will also be fined. <coughs> but anyhow, Ahmadis, by the grace of Allah, are very brave people. People at that time thought, yeah, people of some opponents of the Ahmadi community, that now all Ahmadis will leave Ahmadi community because of the fear of the people around them. But not a single person did it. Yes. Some people try to leave the country. Of course, that's a human right. That if you don't feel safe in one place, you have the right to go somewhere else. And this is also for the example of Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You see, when we migrate from one place to another, 
because of uh, religious persecution, we are following the example of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. For 12 years, he was living in Mecca, the first 12 years after his, he announced that he has been appointed a prophet. First 12 years, he was living in Mecca, persecuted very heavily. Many of his followers were killed, beaten. And then when the opponents decided that he should be killed, at that time, God Almighty revealed to him that, okay, now you have done your duty of preaching to these people, now you leave this place. So, under the commandment of God, he left. Again, for the sake of peace. He didn't start war against those people. He left that country, uh, that place, and he went to another uh, city called Medina, which is about 300 miles away. And uh, again, he didn't... Uh, you know, initiated any war or battle against those enemies. But those enemies themselves, when they saw that many people have accepted Islam in Medina, in the new city where the Prophet Muhammad went, now they became very jealous and they came to, again, fight with the Muslims. And all the battles which took place, they were like that. That those people of Medina, they came to kill these people in uh, uh, The people of Mecca came to kill the Muslims in Medina. At that time, these fi some fightings took place. But after all those fightings, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was victorious and is, uh, with the help of God, of course, there were very few people as compared to the opponents, but God helped them. But after they got the victory over their enemies, what he did, he announced to them, no revenge will be taken. No punishment will be given to anyone. And in fact, this is a unique, in fact, uh, a, an event which the world has seen. But anyhow, this is, he has taught to us now, that whenever you, ha you find this situation in the world, you should also do the same. And this is why in this age, God Almighty has sent the promised Messiah, the founder of the Ambiya community, to revive the, those original teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I would like to read a few passages from the writings of the Prophet Messiah so that you know what, why he established this community. So for example, in one of his books, <coughs> he said, The task for which God has appointed me is that I should remove the malice that afflicts the relationship between God and his creatures and restore the relationship of love and sincerity between them. Through the proclamation of truth and by putting an end to religious conflicts, I should bring about peace and manifest the divine verities that have become hidden from the eyes of the world. Then he said, you know the name is Ahmadiyya, so it, it is derived from the word Ahmad. Ahmadiyya is from the word Ahmad. So what it means and why this name is given, he himself said, <coughs> he said there was a prophecy, that is prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the name Ahmad would be manifested again in the latter days and that a person would appear through whom the qualities of beauty which characterized Ahmad would be manifested and all fightings would come to an end. For this reason, it has been considered appropriate that the name of this sect should be the Ahmadiyya sect, so that everyone hearing this name should realize that this sect has come into being for the spread of peace and harmony, and that it would, would and that it would have nothing to do with war and fighting. Then, once he wrote that. We know how our opponents have treated us. You, you know, this uh, persecution has started from the time uh, of the Prophet Messiah, which is going on. In fact, this day is also a very historical day in the history of the Amdi community. 14th July is that day when the second person was martyred in Afghanistan. In the lifetime of the Prophet Messiah, there were only two persons who were martyred. And the second person was very, you know, highly placed person in Afghanistan, very 
big scholar. He accepted Ahmadiyya community, he accepted Mr. Ghulam Qadiyya and Yil Islam. In fact, he just heard about him uh, and uh, then he decided to come to meet the founder of the community. From Afghanistan, he travelled to uh, India to meet the founder of the Ahmadiyya community. And uh, after he met, he accepted Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Qadiyya, that he is the true Prime Minister, reformer of this age. He sent the message to the Amir of Afghanistan, the king of Afghanistan, that you see, this what I have come here, I have accepted for this reason, what should I do now? He said, you come here and you tell us as well, then we will accept us as well. Anyhow, when he returned, he was arrested and he was martyred, stoned to death in front of the, all the people. And that was done on 14th of July in 1903. <coughs> so this is why the history of the Amdi community this day is very important. But at the same time, another importance is that Prime Minister wrote a book on that incident. And in, the, in that book he wrote this, these words, very historical words. He said that now Afghanistan will never see peace unless they repent. And from that time there is no peace in Afghanistan. He said, you, you have, you know, a very pious man, you have killed him without any reason, just because he has accepted someone. Is this the reason that you, you should kill anyone? So anyhow, then he also wrote in that book, he said that God Almighty has told me that within 300 years, this community will be dominant in the whole world. And they, there will be nobody who will be able to touch MDs. He said, within 300 years it will happen. In fact, this is a similarity, similarity between Jesus Christ and uh, the uh, promised Messiah. And this is one of the reasons why he is called Messiah. Christianity also was able to live peacefully after 300 years. So he has said in the same book, the name of the book is Narration of Two Martyrdom. It's a very interesting book. If anybody can provide you, I think. I would like to request uh, Mishri Sahib, if you can send it uh, to all our guests with reference of this 14th of July. So anyhow, the founder of the community says, we know how our opponents have treated us. They have subjected us to every pain and difficulty within their power. Yet, we are ready to forgive them their thousands of mischievous deeds. You who have established a relationship with me, he is addressing his own community. He is saying, you who have established a relationship with me must remember that you must have sympathy for every person of whatever religion he might be and that you should do good without distinction of caste and creed. <coughs> now you see, by the grace of Allah, this Amdiya community has practiced it as well and you have heard from various world leaders as well just before in the presentation. I would also like to uh, mention few uh, statements of just some leaders. For example, <coughs> the uh, uh, Mr. Jason Kenney, Minister for Citizenship and Immigration in Canada, in one of our meetings he said that this is, that referring to the Ahmadiyya community, he said, this is one community where I don't have to worry about problems. Like kids getting into trouble or criminality or abusing Canada's generosity. This is a community that is very intentional, very deliberate about contributing to Canada, about giving and not taking. In fact, I told the media on the opening, uh, opening of the Religious Freedom Office, the government had just made a special contribution to build that, that community center, but His Holiness, that is uh, the founder, uh, the head of the Amdiya Muslim community, said that no, we want to give that money back to the government so that they can use it in better ways. He said that we are here, the head of the community said, we are here in Canada to give and not to take. So money which was given 
as a donation for building the community center, the community returned it. It was quite a substantial amount. Now, on this, uh, this minister says, I don't hear that very often. It warms my heart to hear the generosity of this community, which is a model of integration and presents a true authentic view of a peaceful Islam that is at home here in Canada. Similarly, uh, former Prime Minister of uh, UK, uh, Mr. David, David Cameron, uh, when he was still in office, uh, in one of his letters he wrote to the community. He said that your tremendous charitable services that you have delivered to old and young alike, your care for the environment by planting thousands of trees each year. You feed the homeless pro project. Your ho feed the homeless project and blood donation drives are just a few of the many reasons that Britain can be proud of you. This is true faith in action. <clears throat> and the last uh, small quotation of the Vice President of Gambia. She said that I salute, she was also invited to one of the meetings uh, in, the, in Gambia. She said, I salute the contribution of the Jamaat in the spiritual and socio-economic development of the Gambia. The name of the Muslim Jamaat triggers in the minds of many Gambians as an Islamic religious organization whose ultimate objective is to provide spiritual and humanitarian services to all. And then she said that the Jamaat, the communities, um, the community's medical services are held to be very good in all aspects, hence complementing government's efforts in providing good quality medical services in, uh, to all Gambians. And she said that your, so, uh, your schools are among the best schools in this country, uh, morally and academically. So <clears throat> this is what Ahmadiyya community stands for in the world. And uh, at the end, I would like to thank uh, all the guests who have very kindly accepted our invitation and they have joined us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mulana Imam Naseem Ahmed Bajwa Sahib, for uh, giving us a very um, enlightening speech and uh, uh, speaking to the audience. Uh, now I would request, uh, we are just near the end of our session, just a few things to be done before we can conclude this session. I may request Imam um, Naseem Ahmed Bajwa Sahib, please come in the front of the stage. Uh, I may request you, so there's a, a little uh, ceremonial gift distribution as a token of appreciation to all distinguished guests who has come on a weekend uh, to, and spared some time with us. We really uh, thankful thankful for their valuable time uh, sharing with us. First of all, I may request uh, Councillor Peter Kavanagh, please, uh, to come to the stage. And I may request uh, Imam Bajwa Sahib to please uh, give him a small gift as a token of appreciation for our friendship. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Peter Kavnick. Uh, now I may request Inspector Barry Mills, please come on the stage, and I may request Imam Bajwa Sahib to please hand over a small gift as a token of appreciation. Inspector Barry Mills, thank you very much. We have few other members from Garda Shikana as well, and we are highly uh, honored uh, of them to be with us. May I request uh, um, uh, Bernadette O'Malley from Garda Lucan Station, please, to uh, come on the stage. May I request uh, uh, from uh, Jain H. Kai from Garda Diversity Unit, please. <laughs> uh, 
Thank you very much. Apart from the assemblies, we, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Convention is a place, one of the places where people from all religious and political backgrounds unite together. So this is one of the day, one of the days like that. Uh, <laughs> so I may request uh, uh, now uh, Peter, uh, Councillor Peter Hamilton. He's representing the Green Party. Uh, Peter Hamilton, please. Thank you, Peter. Uh, can I request Shane uh, Monahan? From, he's representing the Fina Fail. He's a consul from Palmerstown and Font Hill. <laughs> May I request Councillor Brandon Wald? He is representing the Fine Gael. <laughs> Councillor Brandon Wald. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I may request Councillor Venice Liston. He's also representing the Green Party. <laughs> I may request Councillor Paul Gogati from he's an independent councillor. Thank you, uh, Paul. Uh, I may request now Councillor Owen O'Brien. He is also from Independent <laughs> Councillor. Uh, thank you very much. That concludes our prize distribution uh, ceremony. I may request Imam Bajaj Sahib to please uh, uh, come on the stage. Um, as, as a tradition, our <coughs> all our events uh, uh, conclude with a silent prayer, uh, which is which will be led by the presented from the center. Uh, we here the prayer will be led is a silent prayer, but uh, all of us, all of you, can join in your own way. I may request uh, Imam Bajwa Sahib to please lead us in a silent prayer. Okay, please join me in the silent prayer in the way as you like. Amen. 